Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, March Madness is upon us right now. And if you're a college basketball fan, obviously we are, this is the greatest time of the year. I would uh, echo that uh, very loudly. I tell you, it is the greatest time. People talk about all the wonderful sporting events we have in our country. Uh, none uh, hold a candle to the Final Four. You know, you, the Derby, the Indy 500, the Masters. You've the been to all those, Series. too. I've been to all of them, okay. the Super Bowl. And, and they're all great sporting events. But when you talk about the college, the, you know, the, the final uh, 64 teams in college basketball, Everybody has some way is touched by that. It might be your team. It could be a team in your league. It could be the office pool. Uh, but there's some way you get caught up in that enthusiasm. And the thing, in my opinion, what makes it such a great sporting event, it goes on for three weeks. It builds. You know, you start out 64 teams. Then all of a sudden, next week, it's a sweet 16. Then the final four. And I think anybody that likes college basketball, this is a special time of the year. The urgency of it, though, at this time of the year is amazing. It's amazing coaches would like it because it's you win, you continue. You lose, you go home. Well, That's tough on the coaches, well, tough it's, on it's, players. It's tough on fans, too. You know, And, of course, before you get into the, uh, the NCAA tournaments, you've got your conference attorneys, and that's what we ought to be talking about because you know, we still have, have right. high hopes we're going to get in the uh, – 64 team field but we've got some business to take care of in Kansas City and it all starts Thursday afternoon and I might say we're uh, recording this show prior to going to Kansas City and we play Baylor and if we're successful then we play the University of Oklahoma in the quarterfinals gonna be some great basketball played in Kansas City because of the balance we have in the league you know when you look at the University of Texas the team that won our round robin University of Oklahoma, University of Kansas, University of Missouri, University of Nebraska, and our ball club, very little difference in any of those teams. I think on a given night they can beat each other, and uh, that's what's going to make for some great basketball. Well, the Cowboys obviously saved their best for last, and we'll explain when we return from this opening timeout. Welcome back to the show, and Eddie, it was the final home appearance for Pete last weekend. Didn't take long for the Cowboys to put number 11 in Gallagher Ive Arena on the board. You jumped on Tech right out the gate. Well, you always want your team to start out uh, quickly, and sometimes this year that hadn't happened, but it certainly did in this ball game. We uh, good put back by Alex Weber. He played the best mm -hmm. game I think he's played since he came to uh, Oklahoma State. He, he had 22 points. He had seven or eight rebounds and just played uh, the type of game that we really have expected him to, to play all season long and it hadn't happened too many times but maybe that's a good sign going into the tournament good uh, feed there uh, Desmond that guy was on fire mm -hmm. Glennon Alexander took six shots in the first uh, 20 minutes and he hit all six of them at 16 points at halftime it's another guy who could stroke it when he's hot in there he? were some uh, people on that court that can <laughs> shoot the ball from long range this guy here and he was making his final home appearance Adrian Peterson we're gonna hear from Pete a little later in the show you mentioned Weber this is a curious stat. Obviously, it's not a lot of shots in five games, but he's taken 24. He's hit 20 of them. Well, maybe we need to get the ball to him more. Then. <laughs> There's another uh, shot of, of Alex uh, hitting about a 12-footer on the baseline. Now, that you didn't like right there to have the no, he didn't, stop the ball. Wasn't very good defense there, but overall, it, defense was good. You know, you win 93-67. Uh, you feel like you played well in all areas of the game. We out-rebound him. I think we had nine turnovers. Great That was feed. a historic feed right there because that is the assist that you see again down low to Weber. Gottlieb broke the career mark for assist on that assist right there to Weber. That's amazing. A uh, guy who's been here just two years uh, already has the all-time assist record for Oklahoma State. That's what happens sometimes. Uh, I get a little irritated when people say, well, Doug's not doing anything. He had 15 assists in this game. Look at this catch. That was a that pass looked like it was going to go way too high, and uh, Glenn and Alexander went up there and watch this. Great timing, great finish. That's what you told me you did when you played. You were able to get up I made ball. that pass. Oh. I, I couldn't <laughs> jump that high, believe me. <laughs> you I, went on the other I side. I could barely touch the rim. You know, Gottlieb, we talked about him, he had 15 assists that particular game against Tech, and he beat the mark set by Matt Clark, a guy who also could wheel and deal when he was here. But the amazing thing about, uh, about Gottlieb, he now has 439 assists, and he's done it in about less than, obviously, two years. That was a nice drive by uh, Doug. You know, sometimes people criticize what I started saying. 
He's so valuable in being able to distribute the ball to his teammates who can score. Uh, I think he's a lot better as a great block by Mason. Desmond made some big hustle plays in this game. We had five guys in double figures. He was one of them. There's Alexander coming off a, a down screen. But uh, Doug has become better defensively, but his value is in running the ball club and getting the ball to the, the shooters. Uh, but his statistics are misleading in that he's a better shooter than what uh, you know they show. And hopefully by this time next year and getting close to his end of his career, I hope that he can nail all the shots he's taking like that. When the ball goes in, he's got his feet down, he's squared up, he's a pretty good three-point shooter. Not on this shot because he just stays after this, this tenacity of Mason, but two shots before we saw Desmond kind of post it up in the paint. Might we see a little bit more of that the rest of the way? Well, we need to get uh, Desmond down low where he, he can score uh, close to the basket or get fouled and get to the free throw line. And he's not the only one. We've got to get to more people down there uh, Alex and some of our big guys don't feel as comfortable down there with their back to the basket as they do facing the hoop. Well, I tell you, Mason, you had kind of hinted to us, and there's another assist by a shot by Weber. You hinted to us before the game that you had a conversation with Desmond uh, the day before, and you had a good feeling about that game. We felt like that uh, all these guys were primed. I think they fully realized uh, we needed to win games uh, in order to enhance our position of getting in uh, the tournament. There's Jared Weiberg, his dad's a coach at Northern Community College, Tonkawa, and his brother Chad is, uh, works in our athletic department. I guarantee you that'll be something he'll remember the rest of his life. He went up there and uh, we haven't had an opportunity to play our, our walk-ons uh, very much this year, but he got fouled on a three-point attempt, went up there, hit all three of them, so perfect from the free throw line. Arguably, we've won three out of four playing the best basketball of the year. I think it all started uh, when we went to uh, Nebraska and beat mm -hmm. uh, the Cornhuskers in Lincoln, came back, beat Missouri, uh, could have beaten Kansas and Lawrence, played very well, and then came back and won this ball game. So this is the time you want to peak, and there's no doubt that we're playing better right now than probably we've played all season long. Any, uh, maybe the sense of urgency, is it just coming together? I mean, is there anything from the coach's perspective you could put your finger on? I know you like what you see, but why all of a sudden over four games? I don't think we're coaching the game any differently. I think maybe the players uh, are listening better. I think they felt the urgency, as you mentioned. I think Adrian Peterson, uh, a young man that we're going to have a feature on here in a few minutes, I think he uh, did some behind the scenes uh, discussing this with his teammates and saying, hey guys, I want to go to the NCAA tournament. I want to finish this season on an upbeat. And I think uh, there's a lot of reasons. but. I think for the most part, the players just took it upon themselves. I think they'd heard enough criticism about, hey, you guys are a bunch of underachievers. Mm -hmm. And I think they have enough pride that they decided that, guys, we've got to get together and play better than what we've been playing, and they have. As we touch upon Tech for the final time now, this is the kind of game, we talked about it after the contest in a post-game show, this is the kind of contest that you and your coaches envision this team would put out more times than they have. Balanced scoring. Uh, tough to stop one individual, you pull away from a team, you put the ball in the hole more times than not. Tech's a good basketball team. They're a lot better than their record would indicate, and uh, the well coached uh, James Dickey, uh, who's with me for a long time. Uh, I think that the Tech game was probably one of the three or four best games we played all year long, and uh, had we played that way, uh, we would have a much better record and, uh, than we do. You know, you lose nine ball games, and you go back, and, and we've lost to teams. Seven of them are going to be in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you got beat by uh, people that aren't any good. UCLA, Creighton wins the Missouri Valley Conference tournament. We lose twice to Tech, Texas, twice to Oklahoma, and once to Kansas. There's five conference losses. So uh, those teams are all going to be in the NCAA tournament, in my opinion. We lose two games that we shouldn't have lost, and, and that makes a big deal of difference in your record. Mm -hmm. Instead of being 19-9 and nine at this point, you'd be – 21 and 7. Uh, but I think our ball club uh, has really matured a lot. And that's why I feel very confident going into Kansas City. That doesn't mean we won't get beat, but I certainly believe that uh, they can play with anybody up there and possibly get hot and win it and uh, hopefully win enough games that will allow us to get into the NCAA field. And I know if we get in the NCAA tournament, uh, we can give a lot of ball clubs problems. 
Well, you know, the numbers say he's one of the greatest players to ever wear an Oklahoma State uniform, but you know what? He's an even better person. We're going to talk with Adrian Peterson on this week's Off the Court Feature. It's all coming up next. Don't go away. So you think you know a lot about Oklahoma State basketball, all the players, all the records. Well, then while we have a minute, let's test that knowledge. Tell me who ranks third on the Cowboy all-time scoring list. How many players have led Oklahoma State in scoring three straight years? How many Cowboys have averaged double-figure scoring four times over their careers? Here's a bonus question. Name the individual who owns the third longest streak at OSU when it comes to starts. That's 83, and who now needs five to set the record. If you mention Adrian Peterson every time, well, you should start dusting off that trivia trophy. You are one of the few who know that Pete actually ranks in the top 10 in 11 OSU career categories. But that's the way it's been during his four-year stay in Stillwater. And this quiet North Little Rock, Arkansas product, who made his final home appearance last weekend, wouldn't have it any other way. Well, Pete, this day that seemed so far away when you were just a nervous freshman has finally arrived. Yeah, it's been um, pretty quick four years. I mean, going thinking back to my freshman year when I watched Jerome and Andre walk out on the um, court for that senior night, I really didn't know, you know, what to expect or how emotional it was. But, I mean, now that the day has come, it's kind of, you know, it's catching up with me. Because you are so reserved, you go about your business on the court without a lot of fanfare, people tend to overlook your accomplishments, but your coaches know just how much you've meant to this program. Your coaches, your teammates, they know what you're all about. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, when you're not, you know, you kind of laid back and kind of quiet, it's kind of, you know, you kind of easily, you know, sometimes overlooked, you know, if you're not in the, constantly in the, you know, papers or whatever, but, I mean, my coaches know, I think they know, and my team know how much I, you know, I've, I've done and how much I mean to, you know, the success, I mean, for our, being, our team being successful, so I don't really worry about, you know, too much you know, getting all a, a lot of publicity or whatever. I just go out and just play basketball and try to do my job. Before we talk wins and losses, points and rebounds, you're on schedule to graduate with a business degree in May. Uh, that in the long run really is the big part of your success story here. Yeah, it is. I mean, coming in here my freshman year, that's the one thing I, I kind of told myself, you know, I was just sitting there um, looking at different kind of different majors and like the hours or whatever, and I was just saying, you know, if I took you know, this amount of hours every semester and a couple years of summer school, then I can graduate, you know, with no problem. So that's one thing I want to do. I want to, you know, when I come here and I complete my basketball career, I want to also leave with a degree instead of having to come back in, in a year or so and try to finish up. This is always a tough question to ask of a senior, especially because there's still so much basketball yet to be played. But what sticks out in your mind as far as a basketball highlight is concerned? Uh, I'd have to go probably back to my freshman year um, when we came. We kind of put it on OU. I think we beat them by about 20 or 20 plus points in here. It, it was just great. Our fans were having a great time from the start of the game, and, and we just just whipped them, you know, throughout for 40 minutes. And that was one highlight. And then last year when we went down to Norman and you know kind of snuck up on them and beat them, that was another great highlight. But I mean, you can, nothing over really you know, overshadow the NCAA tournament last year and what we did in the first round by beating George Washington and then going on and playing a great game against Duke and just coming a few points short of the Sweet 16. You've grown into a confident guy since you've been here, no question. One who handles those interviews a lot better than you did as a rookie. <sighs> yeah, um, I was you know, thinking about that the other day too, um, about you know, doing my first you know, radio interview, my pregame show, and I think I came out and I had like a, two, you know, one or two points or something, and I kind of, you know, try to blame it on the interview. I was looking for, you know, any kind of excuse why I played so poorly, but, yeah, I, I mean, I've grown to, you know, to, you know, mature a lot to do interviews and just take it as part of, you know, as part of playing basketball here. You have to be able to relate with the media and you have to know what to say and when to say and just try to keep a level head about, you know, all situations, whether good or bad. Kind of tough, you know, doing those locker room interviews after you lose a heartbreaker, um, you know, lose a team you're not supposed to lose to on the road or something, or, and then everybody else is kind of just going here and there, and, and I'm sitting there, you know, kind of disappointed in, you know, here you come, want to, you know, <laughs> want to do an interview, and it's, it's kind of hard sometimes. You kind of just want to um, just go about it and pout, but, I mean, that's part of growing up. You know, you, you, know, you learn you have to do certain things, you know, whether you want to do them or not, and, I mean, it's just things that have to be done. 
You could have gone to a number of college basketball powerhouses. You chose Oklahoma State. While there have been some frustrating times, no question, I've never heard you say to me, either publicly or when we see each other day to day, that you had any regrets. No, I, I mean, if I could go back and do it 10 times over, I'd you know, pick the same school I've had. Like you said, it's been, you know, we had some few, a few frustrating times here, but um, overall, I mean, I've enjoyed playing under Coach Sutton and, and meeting all, you know, all the people that I've met and all the friends. And I mean, just a great, you know, college town, it's a great university, and I wouldn't change anything about it. Do you have anything you want to say to the many fans who have followed you on and off the court at Oklahoma State? I just like to, um, you know, thank them for being there for, you know, the teams. You know, my first two years it was kind of a struggle. I think it was Coach Sutton's first time ever playing in the NIT my sophomore year. And, you know, it was kind of, you know, had down season. We had high expectations those years also. But I just want to thank the fans for, you know, who've been there with us, you know, you know, through thick and thin. You know, we went to the tournament last year. They were right there with us and traveled along with us. And I just want to say, you know, thanks. It's been a great four years. and. I appreciate everything that you've done for myself and also the university. Wonderful young man. You know, he epitomizes what you look for in student athletes. Had a great career, and, and I'm so uh, proud of him. Uh, wonderful family. And he's been a great ambassador for college basketball and also for Oklahoma State University. And this week, uh, he was chosen first team all-conference in the Big 12 along with Hamilton from Nebraska, Pfizer from Iowa State, and Mim and Maneki from the University of Texas. You know, a lot of times preseason picks of players of the year don't always pan out. In fact, I would be interested in seeing the percentage of those who are picked and those who actually uphold that kind of an honor. But Pete was there week in and week out. Well, I think that he's certainly uh, deserving to be player of the year in the Big 12. I, I think the, probably the voting uh, done by the sports writers and sportscasters probably was pretty well divided mm -hmm. because you know, you could uh, make a case for any of those guys that made the, the first team all conference team. And as far as that's concerned, you could probably make a case for some of those guys that made the second team. But he carried us late in the year. And uh, even from the time he started as a freshman, he was an outstanding player. But this year, when things got going tough for us there, uh, he just went out every night and just battled. I mean, he's a real warrior. And uh, guys, we're going to miss him next year. Well, the notebook, our Ask the Coach feature. Hey, and even a few surprises, they're all still ahead. Don't go away. We come here on a... We are back, and let's hit the notebook right away. Conference tournaments, good or bad? And I guess it depends on what side of the fence you're sitting. No, I think they're good. I think the fans like uh, tournaments. I think the players enjoy it. It gives teams that haven't had a good year a second opportunity maybe to win the tournament, go to the NCAA tournament, and it's a great revenue uh, maker for all schools. Hand checks. You were telling me that perhaps more emphasis on this aspect of the defense in the postseason. Well, I think that's one of the areas in basketball right now that uh, the officials haven't done as good a job, and that's hand checking off the basketball. And I, I think that the supervisor officials may have cautioned all of the officials going into the postseason terms. Let's take a closer look at that. It's been a tough road. You touched upon this before, but eight of our nine losses thus far by an average of 3.75 points. All the losses by 4.5 points. The kids have hung in there and turned it around. Some years you lose games. Uh, in close contest, the ball doesn't bounce right, you don't get that friendly call. And we've had a few of those go against us this year, but they have hung in there. They really displayed a lot of maturity. They've grown up in a lot of ways. And I think we're ready to go to Kansas City and win some ball games. Well, this week's internet question from oakstate.com is presented by Southwestern Bell. It has to do with rebounding. John, I'm not sure what the answer is, but uh, <laughs> believe me, we have really pounded into our players' heads, let's rebound better. And I think they've listened, and we've done a lot better job, and I hope this continues in Kansas City. Well, once again, if you have a question for Eddie Sutton that you want answered on the show, log on to Oklahoma State's official athletic website at oakstate.com. Participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Eddie Sutton contest. That's all we have for this week's show. We appreciate you being with us. We'll be back next week. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>